Okay, welcome all of you. Uh, today we have a brief discussion on trigonometry, just introduction to the trigonometry. Uh, as you know, trigonometry is introduced for the uh, SSLC students in the NCRT syllabus. Previously, we used to study trigonometry in the first year PUC only or 11th standard. But now it is uh, part of 10th or SSLC syllabus. Alright, so what I am discussing is uh, SSLC or 10th standard syllabus. We will have a brief introduction to this one. Okay, so let me start. Alright, let us start with trigonometry. Trigonometry is made of three Greek words. One is tri, second is gone. Second is, third is metron. Okay. Tri means three. Gone means sides. Measurement. Okay. So, trigonometry actually deals with the relation between sides and angles of a triangle or measurement of sides of a triangle. Or best thing, best way to define trigonometry is it is the relation between. It is the branch of mathematics which uh, deals with the relation between sides and angles of a triangle, not necessarily right angle triangle, any triangle for that matter. Okay, so the complete trigonometry chapter depends on six definitions, six ratios, six ratios. Okay. So what is a ratio? 2 by 3 is a ratio of 2 to 3. 5 by 6 is a ratio of 5 to 6. 7 by 8 is a ratio of 7 to 8. A by B is a ratio of A to B. So that way here we define 6 ratios. 6 ratios of what? That we will discuss here. There are many ways of defining trigonometric ratios. Simplest method is using a right angle triangle. Simplest method is using a right angle triangle. Consider a right angle triangle ABC with angle B 90 degrees and angle A let us denote it by theta. Let us denote angle A by theta. The side opposite to theta is called as opposite side or right in short opposite side. This is called as adjacent side or base and this is hypotenuse. Using these three sides, we define six ratios with respect to angle theta. Means with respect to angle theta, using these three sides, we define six ratios. Those are six ratios we call as trigonometric ratios. What are the six ratios? First ratio, sine theta. In short, you write it as sine theta. That is nothing but opposite upon hypotenuse that is equal to BC upon AC first second cosine theta that is cos theta that is adjacent upon hypotenuse AB upon AC third one tangent theta tan theta that is nothing but opposite upon adjacent side that is BC upon AB according to the diagram fourth cotangent theta in short write it as cot theta 4, 5, 6 are the reciprocals of 3, 2, 1. 4 is the reciprocal of 3. Adjacent upon opposite. AB upon BC. Fifth one, secant theta. Short, sec theta. Reciprocal of cos theta. Hypotenuse upon adjacent that is AC upon AB. 
लास्ट वन को सी कैंट थीटा कॉशेक थीटा रेसिपोकल ऑफ साइन थीटा हाइपोट न्यूज अपॉन अपोजिट साइड ए सी अपॉन बी सी The complete trigonometry depends on these six ratios. If you remember these six ratios, without these six ratios, you can't solve any examples in trigonometry. Everything right, right from the first two example to last example depend on these six ratios. What you have to do is remember the three ratios: one, two, three. Remaining three follow automatically. You remember cot as the reciprocal of tan, sec as the reciprocal of cos, cosec as the reciprocal of sine. What you do begin remember one, two, three. Sine opposite upon hypotenuse, cos adjacent upon hypotenuse, tan opposite upon adjacent. Remember that. If you remember the three, automatically you can adjust the remaining three. Cot is the reciprocal of tan, sec is the reciprocal of cos, cosec is the reciprocal of sine. So this is the first part that you that you should remember in trigonometry. Then part two. In part two, let us see what is the relation between these six ratios. Of course, you know the relation. First and six reciprocals. Second and fifth reciprocals. Third and fourth reciprocals. Same thing. I write it as a note here. Means the relation between the trigonometric ratios. Okay. And before that, I hope you know this thing. If x into y is one, x equal to one by y, or y equal to one upon x, x equal to one upon y, or y equal to one upon x. So if you go that way here, the first point is you take sine theta into cos theta. Sine theta is BC upon AC according to this diagram. Cosec theta is AC upon BC. It is equal to one by definition itself. They are reciprocals. So sine theta is equal to one upon cosec theta, or cosec theta is equal to one upon sine theta. If it is, you have to remember first. For any angle theta, of course, some exceptions are there, but for generally for a Any angle theta, sine theta is one upon cosec theta. Cosec theta is one upon sine theta. Second, cos theta into sec theta. Cos theta into sec theta. Cos theta is AB upon AC. Sec theta, AC upon AB. One. So cos theta is equal to one upon sec theta. Or sec theta is equal to one upon cos theta. This is the second thing you should remember. Again, it is true for any angle theta. Sine theta into cos theta is one. So sine theta is one upon cos theta. Cos theta is one upon sine theta. Cos theta is one upon sec theta. Sec theta is one upon cos theta. By definition itself, these results follow. The third one is. The third result you have to remember is okay. Throughout, as long as you study mathematics, this trigonometry you have to remember this one. Third one, tan theta into cot theta. Tan theta is BC upon AB, and cot is AB upon BC. That is equal to one. This to cancel. So tan theta is nothing but. One upon cot theta. Cot theta is nothing but one upon tan theta. You remember this one. Fourth is more important than these three. These three follow by the definition itself. They follow these three. Fourth one is the main. If you take sine theta upon cos theta, sine theta is BC upon AB. Sorry, the sine theta is BC upon AC. Cos theta is AB upon AC. So this is nothing but BC upon AB. 
AC, AC gets cancelled. BC upon AB is nothing but tan theta. Please remember this. So tan theta is equal to sin theta upon cos theta. And cot theta is equal to cos theta upon sin theta. That you remember. So remember four things. One, sin theta is equal to one upon cosec theta or cosec theta is equal to one upon sin theta. Second, cos theta is one upon sec theta or sec theta is equal to one upon cos theta. Third, tan theta equal to one upon cot theta or cot theta equal to one upon tan theta. Also, tan theta equal to sin theta upon cos theta and cot theta is cos theta upon sin theta. So basically there are only two ratios. One is sin, another is cos. Sin theta BC upon AC cos theta AB upon AC that is opposite upon hypotenuse adjacent upon hypotenuse. Tan is sin upon cos. Cot is cos upon sin. Sec is 1 upon cos and cosec is 1 upon sin. Please remember the relation between the six ratios. The relation, these are more important than the definition itself. Okay, six definitions I have given of trigonometric ratios. Then the relation between them. Okay, then one, one or two more things you remember. Okay, first thing, sin theta, cos theta and all, all these ratios are real numbers. They are real numbers, not complex numbers. Okay, they are real numbers, not complex numbers. And they don't have any unit. Okay, centimeter, meter, no, no such unit. They have no unit. Second thing, all the trigonometric ratios don't depend on any particular triangle. No, they depend on angle. They depend on angle. They don't depend on any triangle, but they depend on angle. If the angle changes, trigonometric ratios also change. Point number three. So first thing, sine theta, cos theta, all the trigonometric ratios are real numbers and they don't have any unit. Don't have any unit. And if all the trigonometric ratios depend on the angle, not on the triangle, they depend on angle, not on the triangle. Third point, if one trigonom out of six, if one trigonometric ratio is known, we can find the other five. If one is known, if one ratio is known, we can find the remaining. Easy, you can find the remaining. Okay, fourth point, if we take sine theta, sine theta is BC upon AC, BC upon AC is sine theta. Now, in a right angle triangle, AC is the greatest side, BC is always smaller than AC, correct? BC is smaller than what AC, so BC upon AC is always less than 1. So, sine theta and cos theta are always less than or equal to 1, sec theta and cosec theta are always greater than or equal to 1, remember that. No condition, no such conditions for tan theta and cos theta. Sin theta, cos theta always less than or equal to 1, sec theta, cosec theta always greater than or equal to 1. Okay, first point, all the trigonometric ratios are real numbers, they are not complex numbers. All trigonometric ratios are real numbers and no unit unitless then all the trigonometric ratios depend on angle don't depend on triangle they don't depend on any particular triangle they depend on angle if one trigonometric ratio is known out of the six you can find the remaining five with ease sin theta cos theta always less than or equal to because sin is opposite upon hypotenuse Cos is adjacent upon hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the greatest side in any right angle triangle. So this ratio will be less than 1. This ratio is all, all less than 1. So sin theta cos theta always less than or equal to 1. Sec theta cos theta being reciprocal of these two is always greater than or equal to 1. So this much you should remember. Yeah, this much.
Okay. All right. One more point to discuss today. Okay. One more point. We have, we have discussed the six trigonometric ratios. Also, we have discussed the relation between them. One more important point to discuss. There is trigonometric identities or fundamental identities. Identities. Fundamental identities. Okay, for that you remember one thing first. X into x is x squared. X into x into x is x cubed. Same way, sine theta into sine theta is equal to sine square theta. This is correct. Sine theta bracket square. This is correct, but not this one. No, no. This is okay. This is okay. Not this. this is sine theta square. Sine of the angle theta square. Okay, that has got meaning, but not sine square theta. All right. So here, what are the fundamental identities? Just observe here. Again, take a right angle triangle. All right. Right angle triangle ABC. This is 90. This is theta. Theta you take, x you take, or keep it A as it is. No problem. Opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse. You know Pythagoras theorem. AC square equal to AB square plus BC square. All of you know Pythagoras theorem. Square of the hypotenuse is equal to sum of the squares of the remaining two sides. What you do is divide throughout by AC square. Divide throughout by AC square. So AC square upon AC square equal to AB square upon AC square, BC square upon AC square. This will cancel 1. AB upon AC square. BC upon AC square. Now what is AB upon AC? If you remember the definition, AB upon this is 1, we'll keep it as it is. AB upon AC, that is adjacent upon hypotenuse is nothing but cos theta square cos square theta. Opposite upon hypotenuse sin theta square sin square theta. So this is sin square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1. Remember this. This is called as first fundamental identity. It is true for any angle theta it is true. For any angle theta, it is true. But don't write sin theta plus cos theta equal to 1. No, that need not be true for all the angles theta. Sin cube theta plus cos cube theta may not be 1. But definitely, sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. From this, you can say sin square equal to 1 minus cos square or cos square equal to 1 minus sin square. They are the adjustments. Remember this one, first fundamental identity. Sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. This is first fundamental identity. Very, very useful, very important. 1. Then again come back to this one. AC square equal to AB square plus BC square. First you divide it by AC square. Now you divide by AB square. Divide by AB square. So AC square upon AB square, AB square upon AB square, BC square upon AB square. This is nothing but AC upon AB square 1, BC upon AB square. Okay, now. AC upon AB, if you remember, it is the reciprocal of cos theta, that is sec theta. 1 plus BC upon AB, opposite upon adjacent, tan theta, tan square theta. So sec square theta is equal to 1 plus tan square theta. This we call a second fundamental identity. 
the first one was a sin square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1. The second one is a sec square equal to 1 plus tan square theta. What you have done is you have taken the Pythagoras theorem. First you divide it by AC square. Now you divide it by AB square. And for the third identity, as you understand, uh, for the third identity, we can divide by BC square. Same thing we use instead of dividing by AC, AB, divided by BC square. If you divide by BC square, if you divide by the third one, that is BC square. AC square upon BC square. AB square upon BC square. BC square upon BC square. So this is nothing but AC upon BC square. AB upon BC square plus 1. This will cancel. Correct. So AC upon BC. Hypotenuse upon adjacent. Hypotenuse upon, if you remember, sixth one. Cos x square theta. One you can write one first. AB upon BC, cot theta square, cot square theta. This is the third fundamental identity. Third fundamental identity. So three fundamental identities. The proof is not important, but result you have to remember. So what you have to remember is the three identities. First one, sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. Second, sec square theta is equal to 1 plus tan square theta. Cos x square theta is equal to 1 plus cos square theta. These are the three fundamental identities. First, second, third. You must remember this. Sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1. Sec square theta is 1 plus tan square theta. Cos x square theta is 1 plus cos square theta. Okay? Oh, this one.